Good morning. Today's the day. Not the wedding day, but it's the day that I cut all the flowers for the wedding. I'm so excited, but also nervous. Um, it's approaching eight o'clock in the morning and the sun is just coming up. There's quite a bit of dew around. It was a bit wet um, and misty last night, but I've got my flower buckets ready. I've got my trolley ready. I've got my hedge trimmer ready in case I want a bit more privet. It's time to get cutting and it's going to take me a long time, I think. I'm giving myself probably about three hours to cut everything and then take it home. I'm just having a few minutes. Where did I put my mug? Here we are. Cup of tea to wake up and um, start the day. <sighs> Here goes. <laughs> it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous day today. We have lots of sunshine which will hopefully mean that any flowers that I need to open will pop in all this gorgeous sun. As you can probably imagine, I've got a lot to do today, so I'm not sure how this vlog is going to be, but um, I'll pick you up as often as I can and uh, bring you around with me. You can hear the uh, clock on the market square going. The sound of that travels all the way up to me. And here we go. Oh my gosh. Yes, everything's quite wet, but yeah, look at these <laughs> drenched, which means I've got to be careful. I don't want uh, mouldy blooms by tomorrow, so I won't be cramming too many in the buckets. But they're all going for it. Oh man, I'm going to get so wet today. Good job I brought my waterproof. Just look at that panicum grass. <laughs> Covered in little, it's like crystals but the raindrops so here's the plot before there probably won't be that much colour once I'm done here today my windbreak is still up we had a lot more wind but they've survived absolutely fine I'm just so glad I've got big hedges around here to protect my little corner So I think I'm actually going to start with the straw flowers that haven't even woken up yet. They're still all tightly budded because the sun hasn't made them open. And the reason I'm going to start here is because I'm basically hoping that by the time I get to the dahlias that the, the dew may have lifted a little bit because those ball headed dahlias really do hold a lot of water when they're wet. So I'm now going to be able to cut these really quite long and I'm stripping the leaves as I go so that we don't want any leaves in the water because that will clog it all up. And then my flowers won't last so long. So yes, the big day is on Sunday, so that's two days time and I'm spending most of my Saturday getting the flowers all set out in the venue and for those that know Willison, that know Nottingham will know where I'm getting married so I'm getting married at Willison Hall but particularly in the Camellia house which is like a big I think it's 19th century and it's a raw iron greenhouse essentially. Only just realising what a mammoth ta task I have this morning. <laughs> I'm getting all of my stems cut. So yes, the ceremony is in the Camellia house and I believe it's the oldest glass house, the last remaining or well, the oldest glass house in Europe. I need to check that fact. But yes, it's a beautiful old building. And of course, I just wanted to get married in a greenhouse. <laughs> but it's great because it's got that indoor outdoor element. So I knew I wanted an awesome wedding, but obviously it can be a bit risky with the weather. Mind you, our summer was pretty pathetic anyway as well. 
Uh, so I can be, feel like I'm outdoors, surrounded by plants, when actually, if it's chucking it down with rain, we can still be indoors as well. And I'm using my Nowaki snips today. Uh, for any thicker stems, I will use my secateurs, but I think for floristry, these scissors are just really, really good. My ceremony will be at two o'clock, uh, which means I've got all morning to get ready and panic. <laughs> oh no, I'm not panicking. I am really looking forward to it. Pretty much everything's done now. It's just a few final touches, particularly on like the decor side of things. But I do have help. I've got Beverly, obviously my future mother-in-law who is coming to help with the flowers. She's doing my bouquet and all the buttonholes. But she'll also be helping set up the venues with my good friend Holly as well. So I hope you're ready for today, girls. <laughs> it's going to be quite a full on, well, tomorrow actually. That's what we're doing tomorrow. So these flowers are going to sit in water all day and all night until we then uh, faff with them because they're going to need to stay nice and hydrated and um, once they've had a really good drink then they'll be a lot more sturdy and happy to be faffed with so yeah now that this is like the final cut although I say it's final cut I'm definitely going to be able to cut more from this probably uh, after the wedding but because I haven't got to be too precious about them anymore I can cut them as long as I need them, which is great. I don't have to worry about, you know, how long it's going to take for them to rebloom and how long the stems will be after that. So what about the flowers? Well, we're hoping I'm going to make a bit of an archway. I've got my friend Becky to thank over at Elder and Wild because she's given me so many tips and inspiration and how to make the base of an arch. She is fantastic. Thank you, Becky. She's currently on a jollies, enjoying a nice break after all the weddings that she's done this year. So yeah, I really want to get like quite a few nice, very long stems because the base of this arch, you know, we can have all these flowers sticking out of them. And if I take all of the leaves off, then it doesn't matter if it's not even in water because straw flowers dry so well. Okay, I'm going to cut some of these now and I'll see you in a bit. I'm now cutting these Rebecca's Sahara Mix, it's called, and it's a gorgeous collection of sort of burnt reds, oranges, really sort of sunset kind of autumn colours. Absolutely stunning. And one of my new favourites for this year. The sun's really starting to come up now. But I may have mentioned in a previous video that my sister, who is maid of honour, is called Rebecca, which is quite similar to Rebecca. <laughs> so I think she'll have a few of these in her bouquet. Unfortunately, these were quite tricky to germinate and grow, I think, because we had a bit of a cool spell in the spring. They did sulk for a little while, and I did lose some of the seedlings, but it's definitely one I'd grow again, because. They've got nice, lovely, long, straight stems and just such a gorgeous flower. Oh, hello, bee. Now the cosmos, we can cut nice and long. Only thing with cosmos is the open flowers don't always last for too long so it's best to get a good stem that's got a mixture of buds and flowers and also some uh, buds that are just opening as well because chances are depending on how many days you've got until your event or whatever you, um, you need that length of time for them to open that's a lovely long stem And they just add such a lovely light movement. Love them. 
But I mean, they do also have just gorgeous foliage as well. Oh, it's getting rather warm now. I think I need to take my coat off. It's time for their moment. The dahlias are getting their cut. And I'm going to be cutting these a lot harder than I usually do. How's that for a nice long stem? Now fortunately, I haven't had too much in the way of earwig damage. I've had quite a bit of slug damage on the leaves, but at this point it doesn't really matter too much because it's not the leaves that we're interested in and it's not stunted the growth now that they're a good size. After cutting all of the orange dahlias, I then moved on to my whites and these included this one which is the white version of the Café Au Lait. We've also got lots of pom-pom varieties including one that's called Petra's Wedding that I really loved and really want to use in the buttonholes. Up here are the classic Café Au Lait, that sort of creamy, lovely sort of soft colour. And then I also cut some foliage. This is my eucalyptus that I bought this year. It's grown really, really well and I just love that sort of unusual shape for eucalyptus. It's a lot more like a willow or like an olive shaped leaf. And for this, because it's a much more woodier stem, uh, it really needs to stay quite hydrated. So I cut the stem on a diagonal as usual, but then I take my secateurs and slice away some of the tougher bark on the outside and then cut upwards through the stem and this means it's got a lot more surface area to take up more water and stay hydrated. I then put some of my traditional uh, eucalyptus, this is gunny eye. I really hacked this back early on in the spring so I got all this lovely young new foliage and it's worked really really well. It's bounced back with so much vigour and it looks so much better than the lanky wobbly thing that it was before. I'm so pleased with how this has grown this year. And then the amaranthus, hot biscuits, look at that orange in the morning sunlight, it was just glowing. We're going to have a lot of fun with the amaranthus at our evening reception venue. It's actually going to be a pub and it's a pub where we spent a lot of time um, at our university days <laughs> having a few drinks. So it means a lot to us, this pub um, reception venue. But there we're going to have a lot of fun with a lot of colour, so that's where all the amaranthus will go and it'll have lots of party vibes, whereas the ceremony room will be a lot more classic, a little bit more muted, a touch of orange here and there, but not too many brights, a little bit more subtle. I then cut a lot more foliage, including Pittosporum, we've got some Visacarpus there, lots of Spirea, the Sedum, all from that back border where I started to grow a lot of new shrubs this year for foliage. And look at those dahlias, this is just one of the many buckets that I now have lined up against my fence. <laughs> look at them all, this is everything, this is all of the flowers that I cut this morning. What it doesn't include are the dried flowers that I already have at home that have been drying all summer long, including the nigella, uh, the honesty, and some more straw flowers too. Just got to get it all in the car now. A black cat! Over in the UK, seeing a black cat cross your path is actually meant to be a sign of good luck, so I'm going to take that. Here are some of my dahlias. This cart has been an absolute lifesaver this year. I only recently bought it, um, but it's proving to be so useful for moving all of my big harvests from my plot to my car, because it is a bit of a walk away. And look who come back, <laughs> my little black cat friend. Honestly, bring me all the luck. I then had to load up all of those buckets very carefully into my trolley and take them to my rather small car. I only have a little Ford Fiesta, so um, getting these in that is going to be quite interesting. <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Every single bucket managed to fit inside my car absolutely perfectly. And then here they are at home, taking over the hallway of my flat. It looks like a flower farm. <laughs> you may remember when I planted this rose 
earlier on in the year and unfortunately it wasn't flowering in time for me to pick it which I kind of expected but I really wanted to have some locally grown roses at the wedding you know they're a symbol of love and romance and I just wanted a few roses so I called upon my Instagram friend Becky over at Eldon Wild who I visited previously early on the year she has an incredible flower garden in her back garden and she uses all of her flowers to make really beautiful arrangements that are really wild and so so pretty and delicate and all grown within her garden or she does also um, arrange with brought in foliage and flowers but they're all UK grown and sustainably sourced she doesn't use any pesticides and she's been such an inspiration for me she's given me so many of tips and advice on how to build my arch base as well and so yeah I really do owe a lot of thanks to Becky thank you so much um, for all of your help advice and for letting me cut some of your beautiful roses I cut these sort of creamy white ones which you'll see later on in the video to give that sort of wild and natural sort of element, I foraged a few materials, including some bracken, because you know how much I love my fern foliage. It's just such a beautiful shape and texture, and it creates that sort of natural sort of feeling. I also gathered quite a bit of ivy as well, um, but not taking too much because there was plenty there to pick from. Um, so this was actually gonna go down to the aisle, um, as you'll see a little bit later on. Bev came over first thing in the morning to start arranging the bouquets <laughs> and here she is picking what will be part of my own bouquet, uh, my bridesmaid Kim and my sister Rebecca who is the maid of honour. So she started with my own bouquet and I just enjoyed watching the master at her work. It was just so wonderful to see her put this bouquet together including you know, my dahlias, There's, you can see a rose there from Becky's garden and so many different elements come together to make my bouquet and there it is that's my bouquet right there <laughs> we made sure to include some edible elements as well so you'll find a little chili flower head in there as well as some mint it was just amazing to watch her work and then also once we were tying it we added the ribbons and the ribbons of which one of them, you know, I dyed with the hawthorn, that golden silk. We made sure we used some of that. Excuse my flat at this point. It was a chaotic week. <laughs> oh, Bev, you are a wonder. There's so many elements there come together. I love the movement, the texture, so many different shapes and all that different foliage. It was absolutely 100% what I wanted and you know Bev just knew exactly what to put together and she's done it so so well I mean look at it <laughs> isn't it beautiful she then moved on to the buttonholes these were quite simple we had uh, mostly white with a bit of orange from the amaranthus there I think we had about 11 in total so it was quite a few to make and then we headed over to Woodson Hall and this is the Camellia House this is where my wedding ceremony will be the Camellia House in the gardens of Woolton Hall is Grade 2 listed and is one of the earliest cast iron glass houses in the country. It was built in 1823, which means that this year is its 200th birthday, which is pretty special. The Woolton Collection contains over 25 Camellia specimens, some of which are over 100 years old. And although they're not flowering at this time of the year, I know that most of them are sort of red, deep pink and some white ones as well. Woolerton Hall is a grade one listed Elizabethan country house that was built in the 1580s. It's set within its own deer park and it's about three miles from Nottingham city centre. So it's time to arrange some flowers. <laughs> we did have a few little uh, problems that cropped up such as uh, my troughs which I sealed because they did have holes in uh, but they leaked so we ended up going to the coffee stop at Woolerton Hall to get some cups of water and it worked. We, we did fine with our little compromise. Um, Holly mainly focused on the archway. Holly, you are incredible. I love you so much. <laughs> Both of these women helped keep my cool and stop me from panicking when these little things just went a little bit pear-shaped, but you know, it was absolutely fine. 
So we did the aisle centerpieces using the ivy and the bracken and lots of cut foliage and the archway. I mean, we didn't want it to be too big and wide because I didn't want to detract from the gorgeous backdrop of all those trees. But we did keep having little encounters with the general public. It was so funny. They kept peering through the window and seeing what we're doing, asking who's getting married. And it was just such a wholesome little moment that kept on cropping up as different people walked past each time. It just got me so excited. So there we are. The archway is pretty much done and we just started to tidy up. It was a lot of work but a lot of fun and we also added these little touches with members of our family who got married and some of these family members you know they're no longer with us so it was just a nice little reminder and a way of having them there on the day and my mum and dad look at them in the 70s <laughs> so here we are this is the aisle that i will be walking down and the ceremony area it'll be quite an intimate ceremony there's only about 30 people that will be here and this is where I'll be saying my vows. What also made this so special for me is the branches of birch that you'll see throughout the arch because this was actually taken from the courtyard garden where we both live and it's a really special tree to us so it meant a lot to have some of that here in front of us as we say our vows to one another. Also would like to thank the nursery where I work for allowing me to cut some foliage, extra foliage such as the Ellie Agnes because I just needed a few little bits of silver to go here and there. It goes without saying that I'm so so grateful to Bev and Holly. Girls, I love you so much and I really couldn't have done this without you. You made the whole experience so wonderful and I'm just so grateful to have you in my life.